Okay, so in this video, I'm going to aim to give a five minute overview of Git. And so what I've got on my right, on the right here is my terminal window. And on uh, the left here is a uh, folder explorer. And so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new uh, directory called project. And you can see that it appears there. And if I go there, there's nothing in it. And if I go there um, in my terminal, uh, we also see there's there's nothing in it. And then the first thing I'm going to do is initialize this uh, directory as a Git repository. And so um, this creates uh, inside here a .git directory, which my full my finder settings are such that I don't see directories that start with a uh, full stop in their name. And if I type git status, uh, it says I'm on my master branch and there are no commits yet. So let me let me start doing some work. So I'm going to say this is a five minute overview of Git, and I'm just going to put that in a markdown uh, file. And so that's just created that readme um, file. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stage that file. So I'm going to tell Git, okay, I want the changes I've just made, uh, I want to add them to the staging area, where I can now um, see that if I do git status, I see it no commits yet, but there are some changes to be committed, some changes in the in the readme. And so we want to now timestamp this. And if I do git commit, my editor pops up and this is an editor called vim. And I can write the title of this particular commit. So I can say, um, start writing um, readme or something like that. You also note my terminal has this um, X, this red X that's appearing and that wasn't there before and is no longer there. That's just indicating when the repository is so-called dirty. Um, in other words, there are changes that are not being committed. Now, if I go up a level, and I'll, I'll do the same in the file directory, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this repository. So I'm going to type git clone, and I'm going to say I want to clone project, and here I'm going to write the, the name of where I want to clone it to, another copy of project. Now, I'm cloning it locally, so I'm doing it from a local folder to a local folder. Um, and you can see it's done exactly that, and that same file is, is there. But I could, of course, clone from something like, for example, GitHub, which is a very popular uh, place for these repositories to be. So cloning um, can be done locally, but it can also be done over a network. So now I'm going to go into this another copy of projects. So this could be theoretically on another computer. I'm going to take a look at what branch I'm on. And so we, I'm only on the master branch, which is the same branch as on somewhere else, and I don't have any other branches. So I'm going to do git branch and a new feature. So let's say I want to work on something. If I type git branch now, we see that there is another branch. There's this new feature branch. And so let me go to that branch now. Um, and I do git checkout new feature. And now if I do git branch, we see that I'm on the new feature branch. You can also uh, see that in my prompt, my prompt is set up in such a way that it tells me what branch I'm on. And so now I'm going to add something. On this branch, I'm going to add something. So I'm going to start writing a LaTeX document. And so I have my LaTeX preamble. Um, and I'm going to just put that in the main.tech document. Before I press enter, let me go into a copy of another project just so we get the idea. So now that main.tech is there. And I'll stage it. And I'm going to commit it and with start writing um, the um, LaTeX file. Um, now, if I do git remote with the V flag for verbose, I can see that this particular repository that I'm in, another copy of project, has some remote ones. And they are in um, the original one, the uh, git demo slash project one. So uh, the changes I've just made on this new feature branch, I want to push them there. So I'm going to say git push to origin. Origin is just a, a shorthand for this list of things. And I want to push the new, um, new feature branch that I've just been working on. OK? Now, if I go back to project, nothing has happened there. But let's go take a look. Um, and indeed, I'm still on the master branch here. So if I check out to the new feature branch and keep an eye on what's happening in the file explorer on the left, um, 
Now I'm on that new feature branch that is now in this project and that file is now there. I'm going to check out back to my master branch because let's say someone else did that work that was over there. And I'm going to just add a little something to the readme. Um, this is uh, a collection of files for a paper that dot 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 and I'll just add that to my readme file. And we can see that if I do git status, I'm on my master branch, I modified my readme, so I'm going to commit that. Oop, I have to stage it first, because there's nothing staged to commit, so I'm going to git add my readme, and then I'm going to commit that, and I'm going to say add a brief description of what is in the repo. Um, but what I also want to do, because currently I do not have uh, the LaTeX file, I'm going to do git merge new feature. So I'm going to merge that branch. And once I do that, um, I have a merge commit come up telling me that, yep, I want to merge it. And now both those files are there. And so this is what Git and what we mean by version control is doing. It just controls all those things, but all it's really doing is just moving files around in, in the background. And then finally, we can do another thing. Like, let's say, for example, by mistake, I, I delete my main.tech. I can take a look at my log and I can see all the commits that I've written with all the names of things. Um, and I can use this to go back in time. So it's like, oh no, I deleted that file. There's a quick shortcut to just go to the last commit. Just git reset dash dash hard head. And now the main.tech has returned. This is very much a um, brief demo of, of git. There's a lot of great tutorials on git. Here is um, a list of a number of them. I'll put the description, the, the link to this in the description of the video. Um, there's also a lot of tools. Whilst I really recommend people learn the command line tools to understand what's going on, and there's a number, number of tools that exist that help you. So one that I particularly like is one called TIG. So TIG is a command line tool that allows you to um, move around your commits and see what's happening. But there are also GUIs available as well. And then finally, um, Keep in mind to write good commit messages. It might seem like um, an extra bit of time taken to write a commit message, but that first line in the commit message should be the title, and then you could actually have space underneath where you could write a description. And in my experience, writing long descriptive commit messages is helpful. And finally, your history, which again, we can see here, make this work for you. So as you learn more Git, you can see you can actually modify the history of a repository if you want. And when I first started learning Git, I was in the impression that this was a big no, no, that you really shouldn't touch a history. It was somewhat sacred. And over the years, I, I disagree with this. I think you should make your history work for you and indeed your collaborators. And so if you're collaborating with people, maybe you shouldn't modify your history. But just keep in mind that there's nothing sacred about your history, uh, your Git history. You can change it if you want to. Um, I hope that was helpful.